How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. Last week I made a video on cheap sleeper cars for under £20,000. I said if you guys want me to a thousand likes I would make a video at under £10,000. And you guys provided so here are five more cheap sleeper cars that you can buy for under £10,000. Now my definition for sleeper car is a car that doesn't look like it should be fast but then is very fast. It's as simple as that. And I think all five of these cars definitely fit that bill. If you want to see me do this video again at under £5,000 so halving it one more time again you know how to do it. 1,000 likes and I'll do that video. Don't forget that I'm in the UK, so prices in other countries may differ. And remember that whenever you buy any second-hand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, road tax, all that stuff is important to remember, especially these ones because they are high performance and relatively cheap. Please do subscribe as well if you're new. And without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> It simply couldn't be a video on sleepers at under £10,000 without including a Volvo, and I wanted to focus on a fan favourite, the Volvo V70R, with its turbocharged 2.5 litre inline 5 engine, which puts out 300 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Not bad for what is essentially a family estate car. This is the second generation V70, released in early 2000 and with a facelift in 2005, which I would argue was much needed, as the pre facelift does look a little bit more dated. The V70R was based on the PCC2 concept car, which was described by Volvo as a car which is decidedly not just for trips to the local supermarket. In fact, the press article for it is titled, Thor Strikes Again, so you know the V70R isn't playing around. Despite its relatively unassuming estate looks, it has a Haldex all-wheel drive system, big Brembo brakes, multi-mode suspension developed with Olins, and multiple driving settings which is pretty cool on a car from the early 2000s. The car is somewhat credited with kickstarting the fast estate phenomena we see today, with articles mentioning its focus on luring in speed crazy guys with kids, or dads who weren't willing to let go of performance cars just yet. It came as a result of market research into car loving blokes that felt estates could be desirable if they were just quicker. And considering the performance out of this beast, as well as the very subtle sporty styling, Volvo seemed to have hit the nail on the head. These are listed for a minimum of around £7,000, and for 10 grand you're looking at a 2005 example with around 45,000 miles on the clock. According to owners, quality is heavily dependent on which model year you buy. The recommendation is that you look for examples from 2006 to 2007, as older models are known for problems with angle gears, slave cylinders and wheel bearings to name a few. Owners also note that replacement parts for the R can be more expensive than you'd expect, so make sure you have a nice rainy day fund ready in case something does go wrong. It must be said though, a lot of forums are just full of people praising their experiences with these fast wagons. Next up is a car that I featured in many previous videos, but I can't escape just how much of a sleeper it is. The Lexus GS450h has a 3.5 litre V6 engine paired with a hybrid motor to put out a combined 341 brake horsepower, taking the car from 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Let's start with the reliability on these, as outside of this luxury saloon's performance, that's the key highlight of note. It's known to be incredibly strong thanks to a vacuum cast engine block, which ensured minimal to no imperfections from engine to engine, which earned it a bunch of awards, as well as extensive praise from owners and journalists alike for the car absolutely smashing through the miles with the engine staying strong. Batteries can be an issue as can some of the internal electrical features but you can generally rely on that engine block. What increases the 450H's position as a sleeper is that same engine block was used in the GS race car that competed in the 2006 24 hours of Takedo race. If the engine can go 24 hours of hard racing with no problems that really is a testament to its strength. It's not just a fast and reliable car though as it sits in the luxury saloon category it also benefits from being pretty premium on the interior, if a little dated as a result of its age. I'd call it a minimalist luxury interior with plush seats, ample space and some nice specs to choose from all with very real materials rather than fake wood or fake leather. This minimalism matches the exterior too, which is a bit beefy but ultimately still very simple as it encompasses Lexus's El Finesse design philosophy, which stands for intriguing elegance, incisive simplicity and seamless anticipation, whatever that means. This is the cheapest car on this list starting at just £4,000 and for 10 grand you get a 2009 example with around 80,000 miles on the clock. I've said it before and I'll say it again, those of you looking for the best overall offering from this list, this is probably it. In third we have the second Swedish car on this list, the Saab 93 Turbo X, which is a 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 which makes 276 brake horsepower and will manage 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. This car arrives to celebrate 30 years of turbocharged Saabs and is available as either an estate or 
or a saloon. Either way, the styling is still pretty basic, so you'll be looking very unassuming sitting at a set of traffic lights awaiting your next victim. Like the V70, it has a Haldex all-wheel drive system named XWD on the Saab and is available as either a six-speed manual or automatic. All cars came in pretty much exactly the same spec, jet black with matte grey trim, and from a performance perspective, the car gained larger brakes for better stopping power and stiffer sports shocks and springs. On the interior, the sportiness continues, with carbon fibre styling and turbo boost gauges inspired by the Saab 900, another Saab sleeper. It's not stunning on the interior, but it does the job. On release, journalists and reviewers were hugely impressed by how well it performs, especially considering it sits on an old Vauxhall Vectra running gear. Though it's more balanced towards understeer, it's noted as being highly agile for its size, especially when compared with its German competitors. And it's not all about pace, owners suggest it's incredibly comfortable for longer drives and cruises. These are listed for a minimum of around £6,000, but they're incredibly rare. At the time of making this video, there are just two listed for sale in all of the UK. On reliability, owners note they're hugely dependable over rule that there are some known issues with the fuel pump, expansion tank and the battery, which is a shorter life than some would like. A not so common problem is a Haldex failure, which is expensive to replace but not something that you should really be worried about happening. Outside of that, these are starting to become a little more sought after, what with there only being around 150 left on the roads here in the UK, so you might have to take what you can get. I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget that if you want to see this at under £5,000, 1,000 likes is all I'm asking for. And if you're new here or you haven't already, consider subscribing, it's free. It helps me out and I'm trying to hit 100k this year, so please do be part of that. Instagram, Discord, all those good links down in the description below as well. Next up, we have a car that is starting to gain notoriety amongst car people, the Audi S8, which has a 5.2 litre V10 engine, putting out 443 brake horsepower, which gets from 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds, which is nuts when you think that this car weighs almost two tonnes. For the A8, this is the top of the line, as there was no RSA offering by Audi. That's no disrespect to the S8 though, which deserves respect for that insane engine engine. People often incorrectly refer to it as sharing its block with the 5 litre block in the first gen Lamborghini Gallardo, when in reality it's actually based on the 4.2 litre V8 Audi block. The second gen Gallardo did have a 5.2 litre V10 from Audi, but tuned differently of course. The car comes with automatic transmission with dynamic shift program and sport mode for faster shifts, and this is paired with paddle shifters giving it a slightly more exotic feeling to drive, particularly for the time. It also has a Torsen diff, which on later models is more intelligent, switching up the power distribution to match road conditions. It's actually not too dissimilar on out and out pace to the W12 A8, but it'll of course perform better on anything that isn't a straight line thanks to its larger 12 piston Brembo ceramic brakes, stiffer sports suspension and slightly shorter wheelbase which enables better cornering agility when compared with the W12's long wheelbase limousine styling. The interior also benefits from being sportier overall, I would argue sportier than the exterior to some degree, especially considering the main thing that the untrained eye might see is the alloys as the changes are relatively subtle when compared with the A8. This is a difficult one to find at under £10,000, but there are a few available, starting at around £9,000. Either way, for sub 10k, you're looking at pretty high mileage examples. The engine is renowned for being generally reliable, but watch out for sketchy oil pump seals and leaking cam cover gaskets. Some normal maintenance jobs can also be quite expensive as a result of the 10 cylinders. If your tent, spark plug or coil pack is bad, it's an engine out job, which is not ideal. The gearbox has been known to have issues if harassed too much, and the car is heavy, so it's recommended to test drive and listen for knocking from the suspension as wear and tear can be heavy. Taking the top spot, we have an absolute beast in the Mercedes E55 AMG, which is a supercharged 5.5 litre V8 engine, putting out 469 brake horsepower more than any other car on this list, which takes from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. This is built on the W211 E Class platform, which was launched in 2002, the same platform that appeared in Men in Black 2 for those of you into movies. This is the third generation E Class with the AMG arriving in early 2003 as both a saloon and estate. It was the highest performance in the series until the E63 replaced it in 2007. In fact, it was Mercedes' fastest four-door car available on release and absolutely slapped its rivals from BMW and Audi, including cars like the RS6. Until the S65 was released, it was the single fastest production saloon available on the market, which is pretty insane. Full sleeper vibes on this one. That said, reviewers were quite critical of how the car performs in corners, suggesting it feels 
feels a bit wallowy and uninteresting. That's despite it having AMG tuned airmatic suspension with multiple driving modes and of course the customary massive 8 pot calipers for better braking. This car is no joke though. The engine won International Performance Engine of the Year on release in 2003 and is the same block that's in the SL55 AMG, although with very slightly less power to match the more sedate styling and purpose of the E-Class, which comes as a result of a different exhaust. You can get that power back with a wider and slightly shorter exhaust if 469 brake horsepower isn't enough for you in your sleeper. One thing I would note is that the interior has become quite dated in these. In fact, the whole image is pretty old at this point, but it is on its way to becoming a classic, so it might be time to snap one of these up before they become super hard to get. With that in mind, these are only just sitting below the £10,000 mark and they're slowly creeping up in price as we speak. Ideally, aim to get one from 2004 onwards, as ones from before then are known to have rust on wheel arches. Mercedes got on top of their rust control in 2004, which is worth noting for many other Mercs you might be interested in. Many have also been tuned at some point in their lives to get that extra horsepower and match the SL55, so just make sure the job's been done well if you happen to come across a modified example. All in, this car is an absolute beast, and considering the sleeper styling, it well deserves its place on this list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Whatever your thoughts were, I'd really appreciate a comment down below. Massive thank you to the patrons for their continued support, and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.